This meeting order is 602. Um, we have two presentations tonight. First, we're really excited about the first one and, and the second one. <laughs> so much. But your second, a young lady's first, so. And we'll let Dr. Carey take it over. Come on right over here. So this is uh, I'm really excited uh, to be here tonight to extend the Superintendent's Excellence Award to Angela Self. Angela lives in Conway with her parents Gary and Jennifer Self and her sister. During her years at Frontier Regional, she has maintained a minimum and maximum honors of 4.30 GPA. In addition to her academic success, she has been a class officer, a representative for the governor's statewide youth council, a leader of the student council, a member of the National Honor Society, captain of the Frontier Varsity Girls and Western United Pioneer soccer teams, a member of the Model United Nations, she has also completed an internship at Mount Holyoke College, helped to write an immigration ordinance for the town of Conway, and volunteered in Nicaragua to help build a school and work with children. Jennifer has received multiple awards for athletic performance, academics, and community service. Is a Massachusetts Youth Leadership Foundation delegate, was a special guest for the governor's address to the Commonwealth, and volunteered at Holyoke Public Schools in the preschool program. Angela is interested in pursuing a PhD in the Romance Languages and Philosophy and has audited a graduate class in Existentialism. She is committed to getting involved in local politics, values open dialogue about important issues, and this, this was the one that really, uh, really impacted me. She has a firm belief that being part, that part of being a good leader is to sometimes step back and let others take the lead. She is truly a remarkable young woman, and I'm so excited for her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank um, all the great teachers that have made a lot of academic opportunities possible, and my parents for, um, and my family. Too. And the town of Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for supporting me. So thank you. Great job. No, I'm just giving you a personal standing note, that's all. Can I get very emotional? I don't know, he's got it. There's a bunch of things. I'll let you sort of sort out. Just hand them down. We can we can accept your leadership in this. Actually my daughter's place is finally in here. So before they after school, I they're going to be in France and England. She's the student council okay. board, so if you want to move around, we'll yeah. so move it up. Okay. The classes in there? How do you find the time? Let me put my glasses oh, back together here. Oh, Tom, we're going to hold off for one second. We're going to do one other little thing. Since since the young lady's here to do the uh, student advisory council. <laughs> Angela. 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 You want to come back and give us a little report on that yeah. student advisory? <laughs> Then you can really do, do you mind? There you go. No, no you have something for us? Yes, I do. All right. Which is kind of exciting. Could you, if you guys just want to pass this yep. around? This is a press release about one of the things that's happening in our school. Um, so the thing that's being passed around now is one of my personal pod pet projects with the other co-head of Conversity Club, which is an online bird club. Um, it just kind of works on um, making the atmosphere in our school a little better. And so we applied for a Harvard grant about um, our issue that we want to bring up is transgender awareness because we have a couple of transgender students in my grade. Um, so basically we got $1,400 um, to institute our plan because we were a top 10 finalist and we're in the running for more money, which is even better, um, out of 200 plus uh, applications. So that was really awesome. And there's more details covered in there, but it was just a real awesome thing for our club to finally get some recognition. And yeah. Um, the other things that we have going on is that we had a very successful toy and pet food drive at um, our school. It's the biggest one that we've had in a long while. A lot of students got um, 
involved and it made the papers too, which was very cool. Um, the NHS did adopt a family recently for Christmas and um, sorry, our Model United Nations team will be attending Cornell um, for a competition. So, okay. Um, uh, that's basically all we have. If you guys have any questions about anything I've mentioned, I kind of skimmed over them briefly, but um, yeah. We're just glad to have you. Oh, thank you. Great job. All right. Really waiting. good job. Thank Stay you. Warm. Thank you. It's your turn, Tom. The other really cool thing we're doing. Yeah, we're, the other really cool thing we're doing. <laughs> you can have a sit anywhere you like, yes. I'm sure everyone's excited to talk about the audit on oh, Absolutely. <laughs> um, did you get the report? I like, sent electronically. I don't know. If, uh, I emailed them all uh, to everyone electronically. So, um, as far as the audit standpoint goes, uh, the audit went excellent this year. Um, you know, we gave the town an unmodified opinion. So if you do go out to the grant market or the bond market, uh, you're going to get positive feedback on that, uh, which is always a good thing. Um, we made no adjustments to the financial statements uh, that Patty produced. Uh, we had no difficulties. There were no accounting issues uh, as far as that goes. I believe your E&D was just certified the other day. Uh, I don't know if you have the financials. You know, that was 352. Uh, on page 14 of the financial audit, it's always good to see like where it comes from, how it translates to uh, Make sure Patty's not making anything up um, on the yeah. thing. Is uh, on page 14 you see un other un under unassigned fund balance you see the number 356206. It's that amount less the uh, overdrawn accounts that the district had at June 30th, which I think was the school inventory, um, and that $276 grant that was overdrawn that didn't come by September 30th. Um, so you can see where ENT comes from. Um, Translated where that 356 comes from, you generated about 216,000 in your budget, your current budget. Uh, 167 come from return of appropriations, um, and the difference between uh, the 216 and the 534 is the carryover of the ND. Um, the way you're using the ND is very effective. Um, so I encourage that going forward. Um, other than that, your financial statements are pretty boring, uh, which is good. Uh, you want that from a district uh, level. Um, next report uh, is your grant report, uh, which is on your federal expenditures. So we'll say we, we audited about 60 to 65 municipalities and school districts, uh, and I have to say, like, your grant management and your grant reporting um, is nothing but short of excellent. Um, what I mean by that is your grants that come in, you're filing the grant reports on time, you're in grant compliance with grant requirements. Uh, for instance, while we were here auditing, uh, DESE shorted you $276, um, and your grant manager, bookkeepers were all over that and requested from the state at least a dozen times to get that $276. Um, and that, I'd, like, I'd just like to add, that's Stephen Shepard. He's our grants accountant, and I, I couldn't be happier with his performance. And uh, as Tom said, he's like a dog on a bone for that $276, and he's very resilient. Uh, and he and he files everything, um, and he's an excellent, excellent person uh, to have in, in, in the accounting department, and I really appreciate him a lot. I think that's always good to hear that your grants are being properly managed. I wish more school districts would have your grant management uh, procedures and policies in place. Um, the third document is the management letter. Um, so we kind of expanded our testing this year, and this is our third year. So we like to do a lot of three-year analytics. We compare us from the first year here. We like to roll it over to our tests. Um, the first comment we've had, we've been watching school lunch the last two years, um, and even curtain operating deficit in that school lunch fund of about 65000 each year, 2016-17. Um, something to encourage, which Patty was very well aware of, is maybe adopting that line on it within your budget of $65,000, so it's properly funding that school lunch. Um, it's something to really keep an eye on for 2018 and 2019. Um, so that's something to factor in when you're doing 
sure you'll be talking about your 19 budget coming up pretty quick. Um, that's really something probably should work a, a line item within the budget on there. Um, and as school committee members, as a meetings, you should monitor that school lunch fund. Um, probably starting now and going to the end of the year is really monitoring whereabouts it is as of December and as of January here. Um, so that's something I would encourage the school committee to monitor that school lunch fund. Any questions on that or anything? Well, uh, just a question uh, yeah. in just what you were saying about the E&D, and that you had said that uh, you congratulate us for spending the E&D efficiently, I think, and I never I never thought of spending E&D within the efficiency. Th so what's the most efficient way to spend your E&D, and what's the least efficient way? I just want to use it into your operating. You don't want to take your E&D and use it for, like, salaries. Okay. So it's reoccurring, because E&D is non-reoccurring. Right. Um, so if you... There are certain communities that will take their E and D, say, get certified at three hundred thousand. They'll roll it right back into supplant salaries raises. Well, that's one time. That's how you build a budget deficit. So you used your E and D. I believe you used a hundred thousand of it to reduce your assessments to fund your budget. Uh, okay. And then the other two items you voted was for uh, capital items. I think the heating was one of them, and moving was maybe the other one. Moving the, the office moving and the fixing the library yeah so those are one time items. so that's very that's how you should be using e and d you shouldn't take the whole thing and roll it into your budget Does that makes sense yeah and the, the general concept of returning it to the towns for to reduce assessment is that considered an efficient use yeah as long as you don't you're using like the hundred you only one third which is very yes you just want to start using three hundred thousand to roll it in and then next thing you know you have e and d at a hundred then you have to increase the the budget but well, we can't hold five percent you can't hold five percent yes of the total budget yes and, and you should five percent is what uh, five hundred thousand five hundred thousand yeah roughly your budget is about ten million yeah. yeah and you, and you should be at that mark you should be gearing towards a five percent especially if you have any kind of considerations of going into the bond market um, and doing any kind of borrowing someone has to have reserves either at the school district level or at the town levels um, that's how you can get a better bond rating so you can get a better interest rate five percent would be five hundred and thirty three thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars haven't seen it yet you. Yeah, close. i think we've been close before yeah we have we we've been close before we we're, we're a couple hundred off but yeah you're right i mean yeah. Yeah, I, I would encourage like to see a little higher just because I, I like to see it towards that five percent because that's a good mark if you're going into like the bond market or any other. Someone has to have the reserves. Yeah. So have to keep that in the back of your mind. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah. yeah good. Um, second comment uh, we had, some of the finding we had is we expand our testing this year with uh, Patty had asked us last year to really look at health insurance. Um, and so we, we started a uh, kind of like a, a base um, and then this year we use a comparison to it and we tied into our payroll testing you, you were able to hire three new teachers this year so we tested the specific health insurance deduction they start in September you started deducting in September so that tells us you're withholding over 22 weeks that at June 30th you should have the balance in those withholdings for July and August um, and they weren't there, so it forced us to go back. I think it's been a problem a number of years. Um, that's rolled. So the first two years we're here, your withholdings seemed appropriately. Um, the amount was coming in for July. Um, so, but when we test it to your new hires, so I believe your E and D's overstated by sixty thousand roughly. Um, so I think we have in Patty account for it this year. Um, some of the records are manual, so we're trying to get those up to being electronic, more automated, um, so we can get a proper balance in that account. Um, I believe at the end of this June thirtieth, there will be a balance. There will be an adjustment coming to your balance sheet, roughly about sixty thousand. Um, so we need to set that um, when we're looking when we're looking at our E and D. We need to set that aside, and uh, we're um, Tom and myself and one of his accountants. We tried to blast through this before so it would be an audit adjustment and not have to go through the free cash but there was there it was like every avenue we went down we'd hit a brick wall um and we had a week to do this um and now tom and his people are out 
straight till tax season. So we're going to wait till April or May, and then um, Doug and I will probably pick the trail back up and uh, start looking at this again uh, so that we'll have a recommendation no later than the June meeting because uh, the June meeting will be the last time that we can use the free cash before June, the fiscal year ends on June 30th. Yep. Do I understand that? In other words, we haven't withheld enough money from the employees during the year. Is that what? No, we no, have. We have. You have. It's just it should have been on your balance sheet sitting as a liability, but it rolled to get closed back the fund balance of your E and D. Okay. So I mean, this has been I, it's been going on for years. We went back, Bob. I I actually brought this issue up uh, my first year here um, because it, it was my first year paying health insurance. Uh, and when I talked to Stanley Coolis, he said, no, that's not the way you're doing it. We're doing it one way. And then I got another answer. So when, when you say that you're, you're withholding insurance from September to June for the July through August fiscal year, then in June, two months of my money should be sitting there as prepaid so when the july bill comes in the employee's money sitting in that account because they paid it in june and it's not there and so we went back as far to the records of 2011 2010 and it looks to me like this problem probably started when we left the franklin cog and went to the um, to, to the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust where we are now. I think there was an accounting error that just didn't get picked up um, or the bookkeepers were doing it one way and Mr. Scott was, book, was doing the bookkeeping for it in a different way. But um, it just doesn't, it, if, if that is what we are doing, withholding from September through June, for July through June, there should be two months worth of payments from every person who takes insurance sitting in that account and so there is not. Our certified E and D is fifty thousand dollars overstated. Sixty. 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 Could be sixty. How much? We think Six. it's sixty. Six. Sixty. Closer to sixty. Okay. So we only got two hundred and ninety two thousand. Correct. Ish. 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 Mm. Well, it's been rolling forward for a couple of years and it took testing those three new teachers this year to pull it out and really looking at it and using like a three-year analytic on it saying I, I i believe it should be sitting there at june 30th so it's a timing issue it's getting classified as a fund balance instead of as a liability just so happens your fund balance is your ed &E, so your surplus is being certified higher those employees were 100 percent to the district nothing shared with any of the towns correct you, you just do what you were taking out of their pay at 22 weeks yeah so I, I know those three should be sitting there on June 30th. And, you know, we try to take that <coughs> sampling and apply it to the <coughs> census data. It made it a little more difficult because some people have been here numerous years um, where they were on the withholding end. Um, that's what made the testing difficult. But and then the retirees coming from the county that we're paying. Well, when we have an employee decides to leave on June 30th, you're going to have to cut them a check. Well, they're technically on the insurance for July and August. Teach, if they're a teacher, Bob, they stay on the insurance by uh, law, by Mass General Law. If you're a teacher, you stay on uh, July and August. Um, so they would not get refunded. They would stay on until August. Provided they were going to continue to be a teacher, but if say they went off. No, they can quit and still stay because they've already paid for their insurance. Oh, I know insurance. they can stay, yeah. but what if they want their money? You have to cut them a check, right? We would, and then they'd, co they'd be cover. If they wanted to stay with us, then they'd be cover. So it really wouldn't make sense for them to want to do that. Would we have this problem if it, if it was 26, 26 payments instead of 22? No, because you're after You'd be June, the, we in the same boat. July, in the same July boat. June 30th. You'd be okay. in the same boat. Because we tried, we, we did every sort of testing we possibly could. I mean, we, we talked about maybe switching the way you are doing your withholdings. Um, especially for your non-teachers, like Patty. Patty should be withheld over the summer because she'd work in the summer. Um, 
that was complicating matters and changing that procedure. So I kind of said, let's hold tight. Let's see how this clears out for this April, May, June. Um, I know when adjustment's coming, what that dollar value is, and that's what we have to capture. Okay. Everyone okay with that? It is what it is. Does everyone understand it? <laughs> It's a unnecessarily optically difficult thing, though, to, to for people looking in on it. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's it's weird. This is the, yes. the the taking money from E and D to put it back into our own back account. into your own thing is just. Um, so, do we have any other sleepers like this? What are the sleepers? Sleep anything else like this? <laughs> no, I no, I don't believe it. That was it was actually a difficult thing to pull out. As a matter of geography on your balance sheet, you know, it's just a matter of you aren't transitioning. <clears throat> your records over to a liability instead of like a fund balance. I mean, all those terms are more accounting terms, but yeah, it's just really geography on your balance sheet. You're not really taking money and moving it to an, another place, it's just within your own. The one thing we're definitely not doing though is taking it and returning it to the towns for, no. to lower the assessment. No, so no it's, that's uh, what you're not doing. Uh, no, I don't believe any more sleep. And we are not, okay, but you don't understand. We are yeah, not $60,000 short withholdings. I don't want anybody to get that impression either. That's not that is not the case. What was that? We are not sixty thousand dollars short. No. We have sixty thousand dollars in the wrong place. Yeah, just it's for all intents and purposes. Correct. I, I call it should, it should be above the line, it's just below right. the line. That's all it is. And it's been rolling for a number of years. It's not something that's gonna happen this year. Uh, and that's kind of the main topics. Um, I don't have any questions or any, you know. I can't say enough about your financial reporting. Um, for school district, uh, definitely have excellent financial reporting. Um, and that's something to be proud of. Maybe I'll separate. Did you want to mention something about the the last statement on the OPEB? I really don't want to bore on it. Bother anybody? <laughs> bore them with OPEB. <laughs> um, your OPEB statements are changing uh, the new requirement for next year, so you'll see your liability on your balance sheet probably increase three to four million. New accounting standard. Uh, I, I don't know who writes the Gatsby's, but uh, some that has a lot of time on their hands. Um, so I, that's something that the actuary, we, me and Patty have talked to your actuary. He's prepared for it. Um, so that I can see new on your balance sheet coming out. So um, just about that. The, the, so these are really large numbers, and yes. they're kind of fake, or not fake, but uh, someone there lies the truth. Yes. Yeah. Um, the thing about it, though, is that that's also those are also op difficult optics for, it. and I'll just refer to my own town meeting where there was somebody handing out flyers saying this is a five million dollar uh, uh, debt that the schools owes and that they're not telling us about. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. But yeah. yeah, of course, yeah, but but that's what exactly that this um, this is becoming the the this OPEB stuff is becoming weaponized against us. Is there a yeah. city or town of the Commonwealth who doesn't have an OPIP problem? No. No, everyone has it. Everyone, uh, you it's know. an unfunded liability forever. Yeah, and to a, to a you know, as, as things get worked out, you see balance sheets. It's been a number of years, you know, since 2009. You see the seven, eight years of it. Um, what you do see is uh, the smaller communities. It's not as um, dire. I know I'm probably using these terms wrong, but when you're a stepping stone community where People are coming, they're moving on. Your liability probably is not changing. You probably had five retirees on your health insurance 10 years ago and you got five now just because of drop off, uh, we'll call it. Uh, so, smaller communities, where larger communities where you have someone's going there to retire and you have like you have one town where there's a fire chief's position and they have six retirees on the health insurance plus they're active. Those are the towns that are getting killed with OPEP, um, and there's a need for it. Um, but if you look for the small communities where you don't have you don't have a lot of retirees from those positions, um, where they're moving on and retiring more than staying, and that's where OPEP is more dramatic, and that's really showing up on their balance sheets. Um, so we had, we had one small town that went back and said we had 10 retirees back in. 1999, we have 11 retirees now. So um, you can see OPEP probably not a bigger deal in the smaller communities. Um, so if you, if you assess it from there, and then 
two is really OPEB's really long-term thinking. Um, really is deciding how much you want in the trust. Say, like, okay, when then we, we get our trust, we'll say $3 million. You can pick any target. When we hit $3 million, anyone retires after that $3 million mark, we're going to pay out of the trust. And it's really long-term thinking of getting there. Um, so if you think of it in that regards, the numbers, I, I, I'm not too sure I believe those numbers. I mean, I think right now with Gatsby, 75, your liability is like 11.1 .1 million. I, I, I'm not too sure it's 11.1 .1 million, but it's not zero either. And currently, we pay about 100. The, the cost of our retirees right now is about $150,000 a year for retiree insurance. Yeah, I think a really good study, really good study to look at is how many retirees did you have 15 years ago compared to now, and are, are you in that category of people who are coming? That's that's where your OPI liability gets out of control. That's where you really have to think of that. So if you have the same number of retirees, the only thing that's really increasing your OPEB liability is just the increase in premiums as you go. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't even know if you're the one I should have these questions to. I sat in that chair for five years, and number four here on page eight, authorization of warrants, came up every year. Still Not at that chair. It still comes up. And um, I noticed that you said we, we will continue to recommend you establish the subcommittee. And we thank you for noting that we actually have had conversation about this. But that is just something that I get a little, <clears throat> a little upset over. Um, however, my concern is that on page 9, the student activities account, it says it has a $170,000 balance in it. Um, and I didn't know if that hundred at what point does that number approach somebody taking note of it and, and there being like it's wrong to have that kind of money in there and or can we just move that money around? Well, I don't think it's wrong to have that amount of money. That's students' money. It's a class. But it sounds like it goes back several years. There are there are some um, there are some classes that we're holding money for that we should not. And, um, and there was also the, the the scholars. There was a scholarship sitting in there which we transferred right, I think we out. Moved that, correct. We did move that. Um, what um, I suggested for that, Cindy, is uh, when Dr. Carey starts going through the policies, okay. that you we create a policy of if they don't take their money, what you guys are saying, you guys will decide by the policy. If they don't take their money upon graduation. What do you guys want to do with it? Do you want to put it in the, uh, you know, the principal's discretion account uh, to help people with field trips? Do we want to use it to purchase something? Um, and so I've asked Dr. Carey if they could take that up with the um, when she goes through her policies. Um, I do believe I don't remember if it was you, Tom, that told me that at, w at some point we should advertise that we have the money and give them like 90 days, take an ad out in the paper class of this, we're holding this money, if you don't respond in 90 days, it's going to go to the school committee's yeah. um, purview of how to use the funds. It's like 170,000 is a lot of money. They, they do a lot, well, they do a lot of trips, so you're looking at a lot of trip money that's sitting in there until they... Okay, and, okay so it's from there. Yeah, yeah. There, okay. it's from there. I think there's a lot in the current classes. I think the okay. top yeah. four current, I okay. think there's a significant amount of money sitting with those. Okay. Right, I mean, when the D.C. trip, the Washington, D.C. trip, was there we're close to 30 pounds. That's all. You know, but it, just to add on what Patty's saying, we currently are reaching out to the classes <coughs> that have left us and sending notes to the officers and asking them to claim the money or donate it back to the school. So we've reached out to all the accounts that are over and saying, you know, and I'm asking for two signatures from both, from two officers in order to release the money to them for their class, whatever they want to do. If they don't, if they want, they can give it back. Because some of it's smaller money, some of it's a few thousands, so they can decide what they want to do. Yeah, so I would encourage so we're, two signatures. We're doing two signatures. Two signatures. Yeah, out of the three officers, we're asking yeah, for yeah. two signatures to, to, to cut the check. Yeah, it's, it's so, in Alton, Eastern right. Mass, so they cut the check to one of the students that came in. It was a sizable amount. And they went on nice vacation. So, yeah, so no, we are doing that. And we, we have closed a few of them, but there's still many more. It's reaching out to these kids who, I say kids, but they're 26 years old and they're starting up their lives somewhere else right now. Right. And, you know, that kind of we thing. just had a weird thing happen with this. The class of 1987 hey. took their money <laughs> and put it in a bank account and then never touched it. So it went back 
to the state, the bank returned it to the state, and then they just gave it to us as unclaimed funds. They, they gave it back to Frontier Regional. So now this man from 1987, which I'm going to have to find a yearbook and see if it's really him, is asking us for us to return that money to him. I'm Mark Jamur. That's a big circle. You know, this could go on for a while. What year did you get out? 88. Oh. More than your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Might but, have to bring you in the very oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to uh, have any obligation to report it to the state that this could be abandoned property? Can the no. state come in and make a claim on a slate? No. Okay. Yeah, Don't want them coming no. in. No, no, I have no. That's the, that'd be the abandoned. And as far as authorization of warrants, here's the thing that that's a control that's in place. So mm -hmm. when we're assessing risk on your financial statements and signing the warrants you're you're signing off those are proper warrants when you're doing it after the fact the check has already left the building mm -hmm. so there's a little there's some risk there um with that i think everyone knows the risk of it and what they're doing so i think it's minimal mm -hmm. um but still something we note to you um we've been recommending that three member committee sign it like a subcommittee there's been some discussion amongst at the state level saying that you know that's a you should be keeping meeting minutes it's a required meeting I don't know if that really fits um, so it's something to keep in mind it's something that's changing but just understand the risk of it I don't mm -hmm. think it's something you have to fix tomorrow morning as long as you understand it oh we haven't done it for six years yeah, like yeah. Six. Six. Now, we had thought that the, we had thought that we had thought the municipal modernization act was going to help us but right. then we found out that it didn't apply to regionals have you heard if they're going to make any changes so that it would apply to us yeah, I've talked to several people that said it does apply. I said, no, it doesn't apply. They, they, believe me, I've been told. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're right, it doesn't. It, so I know there's talk about maybe going in there tweaking that. But I don't think that's going to take place for several years. Mm -hmm. It would have so, been good if that, I mean. When I read those, and I, um, when I read that recommendation, what I thought is that, you know, we have sort of this uh, volunteer model of school committee members. and. When you read recommendations like that, that call for more school committee members spending more time, um, and as more and more of those recommendations come, I, the, the model that we're doing is threatened. Like, the, and and we're now in the minority. From what I understand, most Massachusetts school committees pay themselves st or are paid stipends. Or, um, and, and I'm not uh, su suggesting that, but that. One, uh, what I think about is once the current crop of masochists, you know, uh, us, uh, goes, you know, d departs, you, they're, they're, we're, 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 it's harder and harder to get replacements or people to get interested in. How many meetings Actually, we checked into that last year, and most school committee members aren't paid. Some of the ones who are paid are paid a great amount, yeah. but they're all pretty much in They're probably in the bigger cities, too. They're all the pretty much done. We did that last year because mm -hmm. Bob brought it up. Last year, remember? I know they get paid at They get paid in Holyoke. They get paid in Holyoke. They get paid half of what a city councilor makes. Right. So, so it, it's they don't really even make not. the decisions in Holyoke. I know, but <laughs> they're still getting paid. But, Evan Chiefs, but I think that is a, it is a concern yeah. that there we're is. signing for something like you said that has left the building. Yeah. Um, which is harder to get back. Yeah, and that's, and that's the risk. Right. So. And it seems like an easy thing to be in compliance with. And I think that's what really drives me crazy. Is it? So we form a committee, and we do it. But like Phil said, we're all volunteer people. How many meetings can you have? Yeah. Like, I've been looking long term that when we get these warrants, when they when they process the warrant in the central office, that they scan all the stuff in, so that when it's sent to the board members for review. They've got the backup documentation so that you can just scroll through and, do signature. And, and look at it. Now, I don't know if our accounting system has the capabilities or the staff hasn't been trained and, or doesn't have the discipline to do that. Or we don't have the time. Yeah, I would well, say time. We but, don't have the time we don't, and we don't have the capacity to store the invoices. You're storing the invoices now. You may not have the capacity on the on the internet. We, we don't. We don't have a, a computer big enough to store those well, I don't copies. Know. It's gotten to be a more complicated problem too, because when I first came here, we used to meet twice a, twice a month, sure. second and fourth Tuesdays. So you only had to wait two weeks to get stuff signed. You always had the problem with the summertime because right. the show must go on and there's nobody here. Right. We don't meet. Right. 
but we were here twice a month, and it was very simple. You just, you know, if somebody didn't, didn't check, didn't go out, didn't go out for two weeks, then it got signed. But now we're only here once a month, so Patty's in kind of a bind because she's got screaming people screaming at her. They want, they want to get paid for what they have provided to the district, so the checks go out before. So we could always go back to meeting twice a month. That was, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you weren't going to make fine. that emotion. Me? Yeah. yeah, we could start at seven because they're going to be shorter meetings. So I guess, thank you for that information. Yeah, that'll be popular. Well, dinner. Well, dinner was on the table when I left. Did anybody else have any questions for Mr. Tom? <coughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. If you have any questions, about will no, That you. wasn't as painful as I thought it was. Oh, I was. And I actually forgot the warrant, so I'm going to run down and get it. <laughs> oh, <there you> go. <laughs> so, so, Tom, can you do me a favor next year? Yeah. When, when you send it, I'd like to get the hard copy ahead of time so I can paw through it. Yeah. Kind of a right. paper pencil person. So when I, I'll mail, I'll, I'll mail them out, Mr. Decker, as soon as um, Mr. Scanlon brings them to my office. How many file copies do you want? You want one for each committee? Well, that's basically one for each committee member, one for each town. We need one for the state. We talk about like scanning things electronically. Mm-hmm. But now he likes the hard copy. No, I, I like the I like the on the warrants because in, in, you know we've got eleven members, and if all that information is there and you want to tap on it to look at it, you can look and see all the backup information. Find out, you know, and, and eliminate all the questions. You're fine with it. You just click it, pay it, and it's done. And that way, we've done the our due diligence that we need to do. Because right now, I look at, I don't know what it is. I have to, you know, I got an idea, so I make a judgment whether I want to find out more details or I'm just going to go on. I probably, I probably, I probably sent it from my own personal phone to my work email. And how many PDFs there were this time? To, and I started downloading the first warrant, and I'm saying to myself, and that was five pages, the first warrant of the PDF. And there had to be 10 or 12, 13 PDFs I had to download, I'm saying. There's and you can look at them, you can look at them, yeah. like you're saying. Yeah. But you don't know. I had a question on one, I only went through five or six uh, because I had my. I had to do something else. Right. And I went through from the bottom. You went through right. from the top. I mean, like in Waitley, I mean, we were small, but you yeah. know, we only had a little stack. We were able to look at them and then sign them, you know, in the case of Waitley. Okay, Tom, you're all set. All right. Well, Thank you. Good night. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, make a reservation to ship your father out to Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. I'm sure you'd appreciate it. Robert. Yes, uh, I'd like to approve the minutes from December 19th, please. So moved. Second. Any questions? How do you spell Hurley-D? H-E-R-L-I-H-Y. Hurley-D. Where did I see that? Hurley-D. Yeah, I see Must be about the fields. Yeah, it just didn't look spelled right to me, but... It is. They have an extra H sometimes. <laughs> Okay. It is. It is, it is correct. Good. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Wasn't here. I wasn't here. Keith and Mary weren't here. All right. Uh, well, any public comment? No public tonight. Definitely not. You want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> Patty, we'll we'll come back to we'll come back to Patty. Um, huh? <laughs> okay, we got our computer. Uh, update on the sewer bill from the town of Deerfield. So there was a vote taken. Uh, we just we discussed uh, at our last meeting that we would um, apply for an abatement. There was a vote taken at the town. Uh, Kip was the board member who seconded the motion made by Carolyn. Uh, the abatement was give, uh, given to us based on the condition that we submit an accurate reading from the spring. The same was to be done with the town hall bill. That has nothing to do with us. So th the way we're going to do that is to find a way to coordinate meter readings with the town. Uh, by doing that, we'll be able to establish that at least half of the water going through our main water meter ends up 
uh, being used for irrigation during the months of April through October and should not be charged as a sewer use. And uh, we need to get the water department to work with us on checking the irrigation meter and coordinating uh, the reading dates. And there might be a new meter put in at some point to reinforce that. It hurt to have somebody read both of those meters the first day of the month or some place there so we get a good track record as to yes. when the water consumption is and isn't. But would you like to do that? No, but I can figure that uh, we could. Does anybody know why this is now a thing? Why all, uh, yeah. all the way up? Yeah, because they've got serious issues to, to yeah, address. Millions of dollars. Money. They need money to do it. And, and so our, they're looking under every rock for and make sure everybody's paying their fair share. I don't think they're, you know, they're not targeting us or doing anything. I think they're just, they're doing their due diligence and we just happen to show up on the radar. Well, we've been billed for 500 and some odd thousand gallons every six months for a number of years. Water. For water. We never yeah. had a sewer bill. Yeah, we did get sewer bills. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, yeah, because Mr. Finn brought it up at Deerfield Selectman's meeting a couple of years ago. The Frontier wasn't paying. So I came in and we had uh, Donna Lloyd look up the bill, and I think we paid thirty-eight or $3,900. And I told him basically what I thought. Okay? I really appreciated it. And we did pay. And, uh, you know, I don't mind paying what's used. Oh, I don't either. But I don't just don't want to pay for what's going on above. Right. It might come to, Billy might come to the thing we might have to split the service. Unless the selectmen really want to cooperate, right. which sounds like they're doing. Okay, we'll see what happens with that. Well, I can tell you one thing: we can't afford that bill. No. Since Patty is back, we'll do the we'll do the financial statement. Well, I need the one that used to complain doing the note taking when we were about when I was bouncing all over the oh. place. <laughs> I had a lot of messy papers. Did we get any printed financial statements or we just got the electronic? How the hell many? I have one here if you want to look at it. I, I, I'm not printing them out if I'm mailing them out. I'll give you mine. I didn't get it mail, Yes, you did. I got an email. In, in, in that email, this report was. I don't, yeah, but I, I there want There's two emails, the, the written report. Yeah, but I'm looking for the printed one that I can All sit right, here. Here's one. You press the print button on your this computer one. at home and you have a printed report. These Just were both like sent to you. How the hell many ways do you want the thing? And Patty got it to us as fast as we can, so. You have a printer at home? It doesn't work very well. Okay. Maybe right. we'll get you one for Christmas. Right, that's a promise. So, the question I have: What are the variances, Patty? Is it here somewhere? Um, so there was a two. I see it. Thank you. Um, there were two things that happened in December. Um, the year, here's the extracurricular development stipends is showing a negative variance of uh, seven thousand eight ninety four. But it's offset by um, account 0016-2110-105-400, which has a balance of 23-166-36. This is Sarah Mitchell's uh, account, and sometimes she pays stipends, and sometimes she pays um, expenditures. And the, all the, the budget money is in the expenditure, so when she pays the stipends, it's over, and I always net the two for her. And this year, for FY19, she actually gave me a budget of her stipends versus her expenditures, so that shouldn't continue to happen. So are we obligated to $23,000 already promised to somebody? No, she has a bit, she has, she still has, that's her budget, that's, what, that, that's what's left in her budget. Okay, so unless she spent it on something else, it should be billed. Why don't you give me that pin back and I'll give you this one. <laughs> that's my pen. This is your, which one, this one? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Here, not right um, no, but she uses that money throughout the year, Bob. Um, so we don't have it covered, but but it, chances are it's going to get spent for correct. different things. Yes, she uses her money. Um, 
previously um, in December, we were talking about um, the expenses in instructional equipment for technology was showing a negative variance and the budget dollars in the account instructional equipment business. And after a conversation with Principal Modesto, the correct department name is business technology and all the budgets have been moved to that department code which is 65 so we've cleaned that up um, our testing our expenditure for sped testing evals was showing a negative balance of 2059.84 due to an accounting software issue problem this should have been rectified and corrected this happened in november along with our tuition accounts and it's still not fixed. We, I spent another four hours on the phone with Infinite Visions, walking through, making the corrections, and it's still not releasing. Um, I, they were going to research it themselves. That was a week ago. And so yesterday I sent them an email saying, hey, what's going on? You said you were calling me back. You haven't called me back. I still have purchase orders that are not releasing. Um, I have people paying bills off those purchase orders and they're doing it correctly and they're showing up in the expenditure part is is showing up in the right expense account but the encumbrance is holding in the wrong account so that is an issue that i continue to fight with um with the software company about um How much was this fancy software? It, it's we pay a lot for it every year it's not a bad it, it's actually a pretty good software um, sounds it it just it concerns me Sorry. that we're going to go live with POs and I, we're having this issue. They told us to run the patches. Scott ran all the patches and, all, and we still had the problem. So they don't understand why it didn't correct. Um, but anyway, um, one other area, um, Mr. Modesto uh, needed to add uh, $4,755 uh, for a directed study sub. Um, I think there'll be enough money in the sub account, but I'm just bringing it to your attention um, that that's $4,755.28. And then one of the educational support nurses, we were transferring the funding from Circuit Breaker to School Choice and it ended up on the general fund. And so we are going to um, correct that and jur I've journaled out the money that hit the general fund and put it into the School Choice. So we should be all set there. Um, and those are the only issues that popped up in December. Can I ask a question? Yes. If we're paying salaries to coaches, how do we overpay $59 to the golf coach and $110 to the boys soccer coach? If they're paid X amount of dollars. Well, I'm guessing, Bob, in December, like now, I'm guessing that this guy is going to come back, whoever the golf co coach is this year is going to come back and he'll be at step two. And then he quits and then Darius hires a new coach and so he may be getting a different step. Okay. So it's people coming it's, in and out. I'm trying to figure out in December who's going to be the coach next, the golf co coach next fall. And if they don't come back, then it could be a different salary. Because I guess on the case of the soccer, boys soccer, it's ex expense, so it must be supplies. If they're if they're only given a thousand dollars for supplies, and they spend a thousand one hundred, if they're if we're reimbursing them an extra one hundred ten dollars, I'm not sure why we are reimbursing him one hundred ten extra dollars if he's only allowed a thousand dollars for supplies. We'll if say. you look right above it, though, they shorted the girls one hundred and ten, so it zeroes out. The girls are 110 over, the boys are 110 under. So it nets out to zero. So soccer is, they didn't overspend. They spent to their penny. It, they just spent between the girls and the boys. Okay. I'm only looking at the negative. I don't look at the, at the positives. Believe me, <laughs> when, when Marty Sanderson has a bill that goes over by a dollar nine, he calls me and he says, Patty, the bill came in and it's a dollar nine over. Would you, what, do, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to pay the dollar nine out of the athletic revolving? And I say, no, I think we can absorb the dollar nine. <laughs> Start saying yes. Yeah, you're fucking. 
Okay. So, forecast to June. Are we going to make it through with positive fashion? I don't know. It, it's looking like we're going to, yes. Okay. Any other questions for Patty? Nope. Okay. Uh, update on the capital fund request for replacement of Mr. John Deere 1025. What, uh, what happened is Bob Lesko has tried to uh, contact different purveyors, uh, lawn companies. Right now, a lot of them are really busy mow, um, actually plowing snow. So it's hard to pin them down on how much it would cost to mow in excess of 20 acres and uh, on a regular basis in a certain way. So he's still gathering that information, but he was he has estimated that the, the current John Deere tractor that we have has 13,350 hours on it. Its hour meter currently reads uh, 3,349 hours and it goes to 9,999. And it's already turned over once. So 10,000 is the high end of service for a compact tractor. If it works six hours a day, uh, 20 days a month, six months of year that would be 720 hours by 20 years would be 14,400 hours and our guess is that ours uh, currently the one we're speaking about is at 13,350 hours that's all the information we have now based on what we were asked for last month so are we still going after a capital request for for the john deere tractor Well, I, I, know I know we're was, getting information, but there was discussion last time about sort of making that just a request for a tractor. That the whole thing about John Deere is uh, it, perhaps unnecessary because you, you do pay so much just for that uh, corporate desi you know, designation right. or whatever. We wouldn't so, be able to bid that anyways because the the bid law wouldn't require us to do a John Deere. We would have to put out a bid spec with exactly the specifications. Um, and it's specifying John Deere would break the procurement laws. Unless they have the state bid. Oh, unless we could find one on the state bid, correct. So then we ought not to be referring it to it as the John Deere capital request. Well, well we, we are replacing the John Deere track. Correct. what it says. <laughs> yeah. Replacement of the John Deere. It doesn't say with a John Deere. It says replacement of John Deere. So you're proposing that we transfer money out of the E&D account to purchase this? I'm yeah. not saying, I didn't say no. that. Well, no, how are you going to pay for it? If it we were talking, correct me if I'm wrong, we are talking about doing a warrant with the four towns. Right? That's what last month we talked about. We talked about last month? We're past the due dates yes, on yeah. capital requests okay. for all four towns. Okay. So we're not talking about that. Okay. I mean, we could submit them. They, they will take them late. They sometimes will take them late, but. But we still, you still don't have the information that we asked for. Bob's not able to get it. Right. I've been doing this a while. It's very hard to estimate what a lawn looks like and how big it is when it's covered with snow. Right. And I'm not surprised that if you're calling Kyle Snow or one of these guys that are John Hancock, the guy who runs Spring Valley, that they're I think I, I, hesitant to give you an estimate because it's pretty hard to see. Yeah. I think John, I mean, Bob's also talking to Patterson, who does our snow now. He also does mowing, I guess, too, which oh, I didn't I think. So I think he, since he does our plowing, maybe he'll give us a price on the mowing aspect too. So that's what we, we saw him last week. Yeah, he was trying to reach um, Bill Smith as well. Yes, we've been played a tad bit of telephone tag, him and I, and we have not yet connected. So, so where are we on the non-John Deere tractor? No place. So we're nowhere. Basically. So the yeah. update is nothing. Well, the update is that we stay out of the we're information. Late. We're too late for warrants. Right. Yep. Um, so that so we're going to wait until we can measure the field or to send people out to estimate so it won't really? even come warrants up until next year. Is that right? Warrants and accounts are closed already, the second week of January. So if they are, and that's what we're being told, <coughs> is, is that the understanding that we're not going to let this die? We're just We just now need to go forward and get our information for next year, yes. Or we have to find a way to purchase Do it the tractor from within. The warrant. Are you able, being on the school committee, to give us a price on what you would think? 
as a company? Don't. Okay. Yeah, so it's on a wait and see. Yeah. Okay. Next year, however, is the the whole project building right. subcommittee. But I think I think they were trying to pull the tractor, the John Deere, out of that out of that thing to do it separately. Right. But that doesn't look like it's going to be happening right. now. Because it's a whole. You have to look at this in a whole different kind of a way. If it's going to cost you, you know, whatever number of thousands of dollars to have somebody go out there and mow that lawn for you, yes, you go, ah, that cost me a lot of money. But you don't have a man out there. You have that man somewhere else doing something else for you that works for you, rather than out there sitting on the lawnmower. So there are other factors you have to consider besides just the cost of having somebody come in and mow early you park. Because whomever is mowing it now is not going to be down there. He's going to be doing something else, giving us production, productivity, somewhere else doing something else in or around the building. So you got to, this isn't more complicated than you think it is, trying to figure out exactly the cost effectiveness of the whole thing. And I, I think it's more than, in my aspect of knowing a little bit about the mowing of these fields, how delicate it is that you just can't send somebody there and I said it last meeting, you just can't send somebody there, mow it, and hopefully it's the right height, and then making sure that we get the lines done. So the guy that usually does the mowing down there probably on a given day for soccer or baseball is also there to put the lines down. So, you know, this, you know, and I know field hockey is really delicate because it's got to be that certain height. You just can't go out and mow it. So to go out and get information and unless someone's sitting down from the, Bob Lesko is sitting down with these people saying, okay, this field's got to be done on this day, this day, and this day, and it has to be this height here, this height here, and then we'll send our guys over there. It's not going to happen. Well, we are talking about high school athletics and not the Olympics here, yeah. aren't we? Yes. Oh, okay. I mean, I think soccer is one thing, but I'm going to say field hockey, you know, what happens if you get six days of rain, you can't mow the the uh, football field and you got a football game Friday night and these guys are doing something else how are you going to get somebody to get over there to mow it next thing you know it, we're sending our guys out there to mow it with our old mowers because that we had six days of rain and, and snows or whoever can't get here to do it and just I, I understand you I, I agree with you Mr. Smith that it's not the Olympics but Darius correct me if I'm wrong but <laughs> our coaches and our athletic directors are that specific with our guys about how they want things mowed and I, I mean I, I mean I agree completely with, I mean people want my opinion I agree completely with Bob that it's I think we're chasing we're chasing a number so that we can shoot down an argument from whoever brings up at town when we're saying when Bob Lesko said that's an awful hard number to get it's an awful hard service to render because of weather because you got to mow the lawn before you do the lines so you got to coordinate each one of those for each game. And we have night games where we share the football field. So we lowered the football field for night games for field hockey based on what the schedule is that changes every year. So we don't have the fall athletic schedule yet. It has been made by the athletic director. So we don't know what that actually even looks like. And then, you know, so I think it's... And then so what does... The current groundskeeper would have to be reduced in hours because we're not going to put them somewhere else because we don't have a need somewhere else. So we're going to cut... We're going to cut personnel to save money there. To and then, I don't know, I think we lose control of that kind of thing. And that's, you know, and then so what about, you know, so then in the fall after, you know, the mowing, we do leaf cleanup. And so that grounds person is not doing leaf cleanup. So now we also have to bid out not just for mowing but for leaf cleanup because we took the personnel, reduced it at hours for leaf cleanup. Snow removal, you know, those kind of things. So it goes on and on and on, shoveling driveways, you know, that kind of thing, you know. So, it, it, you know, it, there is a, it kind of goes on and on and on, and it's a big, for what kind of savings are we really going to look at? Are we going to save $20,000? I don't know. And, and then someone's got to coordinate all this. So who's going to coordinate the lining and the mowing and the whatever, whose job description that falls under? Bob, I mean, Bob, we already know, is overworked in the sense of running five different schools and trying to do, and then plus the projects that we're gonna have coming down the street. Um, I don't know, I just don't think it's the, I don't think it's the right answer. And we're trying to get a number 
to quiet someone who may bring up the fact that why don't you privatize? Well, we well, don't want to privatize because the people who are dealing with it are saying that is not the best way to go. That man, that's the answer. If that's my opinion. Do we actually have the cost of what it cost last year to take care of the grounds? Do we have any records as to how many times it was mowed and how much labor went into it? What the fringe benefits were for those people that are our employees? How much gas money we spent on gas? How much we spent on repairs and sharpening the equipment? Et cetera. Do we actually know how much money we spent just dedicated to the lawns and the Hurley Park, et cetera? Do we have any idea? Or is it just a figure we're going to pull out of the air and ballpark it? Because we're going to need to that to, to figure it out. I mean, what you're for is, again, it's a, a part time position to track all that. We have budget lines right. for fuel, right. for maintenance, but what I'm trying for to say salaries. Is, so and that's how much it costs. To say whether it's cost effective or not, we have to try to figure out what the costs are. So, so, oh, man. Go ahead. so Bob Wesco has a matrix, and the matrix um, is standard uh, procedures, standard operating procedures for X amount acre per what it takes to care for X amount of acre uh, per season and when he estimated the numbers it came to I think two and a half people not including the equipment and right now we have one and three quarters we uh, our Brian is out there most of the time with him but it's uh, we're understaffed in that piece as far as the, the equipment and the gasoline and all that, those are different lines there. But there is a, a standard, and I, I think he could get that versus he can find the people. I'm sure he can find what the, you know, 20 acres at this and how much it would cost for the equipment. But I, as I said earlier, it's already past its useful life. The tractor we're talking about replacing is past its useful life. It's used daily. I'm daily from April to October. So not to beat a dead tractor, but uh, if we can, if, if if it doesn't matter. It's not dead yet, Phil. <laughs> no, no, I know. But, okay, so so if if it, it oh, thank you. Oh, if uh, if the if the idea of getting quotes da, 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 is actual just window dressing, and we're not truly interested in that as a solution, then why are we letting that? hold us up in getting a warrant so that we can take care of this this year. Because warrants are closed. Well, they maybe. They might take a late one. I think that they would. The warrant's not closed. They're just, we're just past their due date. When you, when you go, you're going to give them a menu that you want to buy the tractor. And you're going to have one town say, we don't like, we don't agree. So you're going to have money appropriate in one town, not the other town. And like we had a few years ago. Yeah, we did. So, why, if you really think and you're so passionate about buying this tractor, and you and that the hours are justified its replacement, okay? Maybe we should take the thirty-two thousand one hundred dollars out of the E and D account and buy it and get it over with. Well, that's where we'll be in September when the, the tractor dies and we didn't prepare it ahead of time. But we would still have to notify the towns, and then they'd have meet, and they'd have to have and then meetings. And when you look at also, you look at E and D. Is the tractor the most important thing we want to be saving our money for? Because we just got a reduction now. We're just over what two five now for two hundred. You know, we, you know, we could have other things. Remember that long list that Bob has put together? Oh, I know. Trying to get the money for anything on that list could break, oh, yeah, okay. and so we have to be prepared for it. And so this was just one thing that we could pull out. Go to the towns with and say, listen, this is coming. We either pay for it now or we pay for it through whatever the building committee comes up with. That was the idea there. From one of our previous meetings, it was discussed that these items are not really part of the repair renovation piece. It, it's extending. It, it's, you know, in excess of what really needs to be done to the building and the facility. So we, we agreed uh, in our budget dis deliberations uh, within the uh, admin team to pull that out and say, this one really needs it. In a perfect world, both tractors need to be replaced. But in this world, at least the uh, the littler one does need to be replaced. It's Didn't we create a capital fund a couple of years ago? For capital purchases? Because it was stabilization, and we used it to move. All gone? <laughs> 
Maybe you could include that in your letter to the classes, to the past classes, that they could donate uh, their money. Uh, can we use your money to buy a lawnmower? Mm -hmm. um, we, we were talking about the ones that I've seen go out. It's like twelve hundred dollars. Hey, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, it would, it would take a little bit off of it, but. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, yeah. I, I just got a new list from get a um, Mrs. Swahiki. Mrs. Swahiki. Um, Karen Swicky, she's a, she retired and she does this. Let me see all our old class money. Class activity. I'm going to go back. We got money from the class of 2001 to, I will not include 2017. Wait, what, what year? What, what, who you just You wouldn't include anybody in the 2017. Okay, so we'll go through 2016. We have. Because the younger classes may use it for class reunions. Right. So I'll go through. The, I'll go through the class of sixteen. There's twenty nine thousand five dollars and ninety four cents. There you go. There you go. Which class? Twenty sixteen. No, twenty sixteen going back, back to, to two thousand and one. 000. They have twenty nine thousand five dollars and ninety four cents sitting in our accounts. We well, also have some alumni memorial tractor. We always so moved. Wait a minute. We also have some money sitting in a. Uh, a rental revenue account for that we collected for for these building use fees. And how much money we got? I, I can't get into. Um, we're doing upgrades right now on the Infinite Vision software, trying to fix that problem. So but do I remember I seventeen thousand? My ballpark. Right so the question is, we may be able to mush some money what together like money right that would take a substantial mm -hmm. amount off. I don't know. For a little bit. Did we spend all the white money? No, she just said the same thing. Did you say the same thing? Can we use the light money, which was meant for the fields, to buy the tractor to mow the fields? Is that in the same vein of spending? Providing it's running. You might want to ask. That's pretty that one. That's pretty. He's going to go break a couple of headlights in the tractor, and then that will fit in the light. That's counsel for the those counts. That's a legitimate expense of that. Well, we were saving How long does the tractor last? Yeah, so I'm saying, so yeah, you deplete these accounts hoping you don't have to buy another tractor for 20 years. So, there's other things that we did it. We did it. The catch is done. You prioritize. When did we do that? Focus. Sorry. Patty, do you have any idea what the percentage of the overall budget is spent on athletics? Um, I could uh, I could give you a just a ballpark. Like salaries and stuff. Don't even, don't even go there. Salaries yeah, and everything's I'm right on. About, believe me. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about stipends. Uh, equipment. Equipment. It was like 200 and. I guess I would say field maintenance. 227,858 dollars. For. For. Athlet athletic director all the way down to legal fees and concussion testing. $227,858. This year, um, for FY19, it would be $231,214. So tiny. Yeah. And then we take in how much in fees? Does that include the... That does it? not include the athletic revolving fee account. That's a, that's a standalone. You might want to add the well, $600,000 for the new track next year. So. All that other oh, stuff in there. there. <laughs> and the football uh, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Forty-six thousand dollars. It's only two hundred thousand. Two hundred twenty. Well, two thirty-one. Uh, I got two twenty-seven. Is there a, yeah. No, next year. Does yeah. John Deere have a lease program where we could lease it? No. We're gonna abuse it. If you just heard what they did with that. That's not it's a, everywhere. That's not a bad idea. Nice What's that? Circling back to the uh, green to lease yeah. one and just set up lease payments. Oh, I know. I, you guys keep circling back to the green one. I don't know. You've been watching too much television. What color do you there have? There are lawnmowers. There are lots of different colors that cost lots of different numbers. And we keep circling back to that one. They're red. I don't know why that is. I'm not saying it's bad. Well, and again, it, we would, would not be able to name in our bid spec. We don't have to accept it either. But you have to have reason not to. Right. If you get a bid on a Kubota that's $5,000 less than a John Deere, you're going to scratch your head and go, well, there's a how do we make that one fly? Isn't there a New Holland dealer in Wayland? Uh, everything's gone from that building. Is it? No. There's nothing there. No, I don't know how it happened. I think Amherst stuff. I think Ripko's going to buy that for uh, Amherst Farmer Supply because he closed it when it burns. I think he's going to buy that building. But 
that's a whole other set of problems. But you got lots of different uh, Cindy. Um, so can we move along? Yeah. <laughs> I just think we're going around in circles, so we've been updated, and then sadly right. we don't really have an answer. So, but I think last night, Bobby, you weren't able to make the meeting, but Darius ran it, did a nice job. Uh, the selectmen from the four towns and, and whatever, and there was a lot of good give and take, and I think we, we I'm hopefully that we're going to get some cooperation. Anybody else get a different feel from that? And would it be a fair thing to do at this point to? At least put it out to bid. Yeah. The compact tractor and see what the prices are and see how many you get back. You can't put something out to bid that you don't have funding for. Do we do if we can't even put it out to bid? RFP? Of course we. we Not can, if we don't have funding. We can t we can transfer. What are you talking about? Sure you can. Why you can? No. You, you need to have a funding source to put something out to bid. But you don't sign well, the contract. When, just, that, that's a that's entry. You can't enter into a contract. Would you bid on something that there was no money behind? Mm -hmm. No one I would. So I'm going to do all that work, and then on bid, they're never going to move well, forward on it. If, People are busy. If we got a decent price, and it was cost effective in our opinion, uh, it probably has to take two thirds vote to vote it out of E and D, or out of wherever else account we want to transfer it out of. There, there's monies available. You may have to transfer it from two or three accounts. But Billy's got a good idea. You ought to know know what it is, and no, you ought to put in the equipment that you're going to want with it. If you want a front end loader with it or a snow blower or whatever as Bob was talking about, you need to specify all that all that stuff there. But it doesn't make how do, how do you make an argument? I don't know what it's gonna to cost to have somebody else mow it and I don't know what it's gonna to cost to buy a lawnmower, but I need one. Who's gonna to listen to that argument? Who's gonna make it? Ain't gonna be me. <laughs> Well you, well, you do your research online to see to see what you get for what you think the price is going to be. That'll last five seconds at town meeting. It gets shredded. So if, if so if if if, we, if if it's something we need this year, before when April comes around, there's a few different sources. We got possibly E and D. We got the light fund. You know, unless somebody tells me something different, there's two places where we can get the money from. There's enough money. How much money is left in the light fund? Can you give me an idea approximately? Um, a, I didn't know that we spent any money out of the light fund yet, and B, I cannot get into Infinite Vision oh, I'm sorry. running updates. Sorry. Well, Patty, as of June 30th, the financial statement should tell us what's in it. Well, 85, but then Bill and Lynn just said they made a patch. They did work on the track, and they're taking some, it out of that account. I didn't know. No one, no one informed me of that. Yeah, it was, it was only six thousand. Yeah, I don't know where that money. It yeah. didn't come out of the the light fund. So we still got eighty five thousand. Enough to buy a tractor or three. <laughs> We're looking for one, Bob. So Mr. Lesko needs to write up a bid spec of what he is looking for. And the school committee has to authorize a funding source, and then we can go out to bid. And then you don't have to award it, but you have to have the money. Okay. Is this something that we can have ready for like next meeting? That way we'll make a decision whether we take it, if we can, out of the light fund or take it out of E and D. At least we'll have, two, unless we have another source. But I think we're getting, see, the, the reason that the tractor is up for discussion is because it was decided to go to town meeting for the tractor. Right. So if we're not going to town meeting for the tractor, then the reason for the tractor being at the top of the list, it no longer exists. And then we're back to what's at the top of the list for Bob Lesko, and which is, I know for a fact, is not the tractor. So uh, <laughs> If we're doing town meeting warrant, then tractor. If we're not, then whatever is at the top of the list. Then we wait to see what breaks. <laughs> and then take it out of E and D? Or, yeah, wherever, or, we, or wherever we can. I, I think Mr. Cantor is, is dead on right about the priorities. If, we, if, if the priority to go to warrant to, with the things was the tractor, but if that were to fail and something else fails, I don't think that would be Mr. Burlesco's first priority of wanting to purchase something because he still feels we might have a few hours left in, in that in that tractor. Darius is shaking his head. 
Right, I mean, that's exactly, you know, what we did is, you know, the, the feedback that we got was that that tractor should not be in that capital improvement plan, not where the bonding plan, wherever we were going to call that, and we should pull that out. So the idea was this is not the year. We decided we had a whole year to go after that money or those issues as however we're going to approach it. Um, and the thing is, well, they said we should pull this out. Let's, let's put this on. Eventually, the town is going to pay for it one way or the other. We've got this long list of issues that are coming. They're going to pay for it one way or the other. So the idea was, let's pull this one thing out. It's very simple. It's straightforward. It's one line in a warrant for the most part. If you do it right, and you know, the cost in town is going to be, you know, I think it's a solid. It's not a really controversial thing. It's turned to a lot more controversial than I thought it was when we talked about it. Because I see on warrants all the time, and all because I go to all four towns. And I see, you know, they're going to get a new plow for the truck. They're going to get a new salter for the whatever. And it's just straightforward. And usually it's, yep, that's a piece of equipment. That's what they need. There's not a whole lot of controversy. Right. So when the controversy came up that says, do we need to be even buying mowing equipment? How much does it cost? You know, I was, you know, a little bit was like, whoa, we're just looking for a piece of equipment replacing. That's what we see in most of the warrants. So that, if we don't want to do it, we brought it to you guys. If you don't want to do that as... You know, we don't want to bring it to the towns because that's something we want the towns voting on and we can add it to either take it out of our general budget from some from excess efficiency or some other you know things that are open or we add it back into the the, the building plan I, I don't know but eventually we're gonna need a tractor I think, I, I think we should I think we should submit it to the four towns just to get a taste of what we think they're gonna do I think it would give us a, an idea of how they're feeling and and see how it, and and just see how it goes. If we're if we're going to do that, it's something we have to do ASAP. Correct. We're going to have to get Bob to spend a couple hours putting something together with his guys to figure out exactly what he needs for equipment and go fill your fingers, do the walking through the computer, and figure out approximately how much it's going to cost. With X Y Z, and then we and then we have to figure out the uh, allocation by town percentage, and we have to make sure that all four towns will allow us to put it on their warrant, right? Because we're late submitting. <coughs> well, it's, an annual, it's an annual town meeting, so you only need a few signatures to, yeah. to petition or order. Yeah. yeah. But we don't have anything from the school going in for warrant items, right? From Frontier? Not from Frontier. That's kind of why we okay. decided on this one. Do we have a number? We gotta work on that. Yeah, I was gonna say, at the time, wasn't it two mowers? What were we talking about, two? We were talking about a big one and I thought we were one? talking about two. I thought it was like a hundred. Originally, we brought forward the two mowers. One was very expensive, one's yeah. around $70,000, and the John Deere was, is anybody? 32. It's around, around so, 32, 100. Right. So, I mean, you break that the assessment, you're talking about most of the towns are talking about voting on a $5,000 to $10,000 piece of equipment. Um, the last meeting, we said that 70000 piece of equipment, very rich, blah, 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 there's no way you're going to get that through. So, we said, okay, let's just, you know, let's just work on the John Deere because, from my understanding, there's more life left than the other one. They both need replacing. There's more life left in the Toro. Ground the other one. whatever. Um, so that's where we're, how we got to where we're at now. Okay. <clears throat> motion? Yeah. Um, I don't even know what the motion should say, but I'll make it. If it gives me words. Make a motion to submit to the four towns a warrant, a capital warrant article to purchase a new tractor. So moved. Second. Uh, not to exceed thirty-five thousand. Are you already sure. amending my warrant? It's the town. Let's get those numbers and insert them later. Well, you want to put yeah. enough in to get what you want. Yeah, right, but, but what Bob, if it's 42? <laughs> now you've limited it to, to 35. That's amongst the work they have yeah, to do the, before yeah. they right. submit. Yeah. Anybody else Let's have any more questions? Even I'll open. second Cindy's motion. Judy already did. Oh, nice sorry. Try, You're slow. No the question. All in favor? Over and over. Talked enough. Bill? No. What? Yeah. All right. Update on the Frontier Regional Library Media Center roofing and cricket project. The new roof, uh, the new roofing on the cricket and the LMC is complete, except for some flashing work that may get done this week. 
if the temperatures uh, are as high as predicted. There is a joint where the rubber and ro the rubber roof meets. I wanted to say rubber meets, mm -hmm. but anyway. The rubber roof meets the metal structure of the LMC uh, that is part of this project. That work needs to wait until spring as the material does not work well in the cold. The project is complete enough so that we have greatly reduced the likelihood of leaks during the rest of this winter. Anybody have any questions? Okay. I just have one thing probably before we move on too far. <coughs> we, who's ever preparing the budget, uh, make sure you put enough money in for the maintenance of the buildings uh, because you know, we don't want to get criticized that we're not maintaining budget them. deliberations. Are budget deliberations is 7B. What's that? We're coming up to that, 7B. Uh, all right, fine. Take care of Kevin for his 45. Okay. Right right Hi, Kevin. Hey. You're next. Oh, oh, right. You're going to go to Scotland. Yeah. So, uh, and for those who may not know me, I'm Kevin Murphy. He's here country regional support. I have. That's right. For we'll share one. Kind of sharing. Um, I've, I've been uh, doing student tours for uh, upwards of 15 years, Pioneer and Frontier. Uh, and I just came back from Ireland in April with a variety of students, and I combined with Northampton. It was a successful trip. Everybody had a great time. I was thinking of bringing up the uh, video presentation and having it, but no, I, I know you guys are very busy. But uh, the, the students really did enjoy it, and I want to thank you for that, uh, that approval. Um, as you know, I, prob I you may know, I uh, did a Paris trip with Frontier, um, and Ireland, Spain, and uh, let's see, so Paris. Uh, yeah, and so uh, I think that's it. And then, um, oh, I did a Costa Rica trip as well, but I didn't actually go. Um, EF Educational Tours is a very well-known company. I know a few other teachers that also go with EF. I've been with EF for a long time. Uh, they provide a full uh, tour director on the trip. Uh, they have a world uh, presence. They have uh, uh, headquarters in just about every country. Um, and they offer the lowest prices. They're accredited. Um, I'm very comfortable with this, with this uh, company. And uh, they're committed to safety, and they have, uh, you know, travel protection and all those kinds of things. Um, we're going to be going April 2019, asking for approval to um, maybe possibly have a couple of days prior to April break and a couple of days after. It's either or of uh, wiggle room because the. the, the Departure dates and arrival dates vary based on you know, how they work on the flights and how the program works. And it's nine days. Um, if you do have the, the things and look inside, we're going to be doing the northern part there, and, uh, Glasgow, and West Highlands, and Loch Ness, Harry Potter World, and castles, and all these great things. And, and I have a, a lot of interest. I actually have adult interest too. And adults are welcome to come. Um, so it's going to be an exciting time, uh, and I would uh, entertain any questions you might have before I take up any more of your time. Yes, sir. Yes. Estimated cost. Thirty-four hundred dollars for students. First group. Yeah, nine days, and that includes um, uh, trip airfare, uh, breakfast, and dinner. We uh, don't typically include lunch because we're out and about. It makes more sense just to dive into a cafe or something. But. Is this April vacation? April or vacation. Or somewhere a year later. The weekends on either side. Yeah, yeah well, uh, but maybe the Thursday, yeah. Friday. I right. always ask for those because sometimes we leave on a Thursday, so I leave on a Friday. So this trip insurance and whatever the kids, it's, it's adequate? Yeah. If, so a, kid, it, it if covers, a kid gets sick, yeah. is the kid going to be flown home uh, to, to where he's going to get the care he needs? Yes. Yes, it's, it's, you know, if, if there's a cancellation included, you know, if like, a, God forbid, I've got a family, they can't go on a trip, you know, all those, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, it's a strong insurance for that reason. So it's that. adequately protected, so, yeah. okay. I yeah. just want to make sure that if somebody gets sick that they can get the proper medical care that they Oh, yeah. Need. Well, so medical and care itself is, you know, typically carried by your own uh, health insurance, but yes, there's like, you know. Uh, but the, I'm talking about if, if, Somebody has 
some problems that they're not able to treat in that country and they have to be flown home. Right, right. Who's so picking up the airfare? That's that's part of the, uh, that, that insurance, right? Okay, I just want to make sure it's a good. Kind of yeah. You know, about how many foreign trips we're up to for our April break? Uh, for that year? Yeah. We know we have a trip to the Italy trip. New Zealand? No, that's this, 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 oh, this year. year. It's, yeah, we just do. No, I mean, that, it's great. If, if the numbers support it, it's more than there. I'm really excited about uh, the energy here at Frontier. A lot of teachers who are there. Yeah, really excited about that. Yeah, that's great. The kids, well, the kids love it. They love the time. So, you know, I think that's great. What, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was a kid, freshman in high school, I went to Mexico for summer. What about myself? Eye opening, and uh, that just you know opened tons of doors for me because I, I had many directions when I was an eighth grader, uh, but I ended up uh, mastering uh, getting a, a major in Spanish. And I was a Spanish teacher, you know that for uh, 11 years. Of my years. Uh, that was that was kind of started my life, just eye opening, and I just love to travel. So I think that's a great opportunity for our students. Getting that exposure to see there's more out there. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. Second. Bill and Bob. Any other questions? Thank you. All in favor? If you would like to keep those, you may. Otherwise, I'll take those back. Especially if you're interested. <laughs> No, now, if you were going to Alaska, Kevin, one year, Alaska. you let me know. Okay. I'm not sure if Frontiers are... Would you go no. live fishing for trout in Alaska? Fishing, fishing, uh, well, no, I mean, look at, you know, the glaciers. I mean, it's... Oh, it's yeah. I mean, Before some, they're gone. <laughs> well, so, the, the, the Costa Rica trip no, was more of a science trip. And yeah. That was, that was well received, there, you know, the, the Galapagos. And yeah. Stuff. So, there is a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, FY19 budget. We started deliberating, well, I wouldn't even call it that. We took a very preliminary look at some numbers tonight. There are very, I don't know, half a dozen key pieces of that, of what we looked at tonight that are nowhere near set in stone. And they have, they have such an effect on the bottom line that at, at this point the budget subcommittee voted to to table the number that we have and not not release it, not work with it yet because one of the things is, it is related to health insurance. That hap that vote happens tomorrow, and there are a couple other things. The governor's budget is due out in four days or five days or something. We don't have that, so there are a lot of key pieces that affect the bottom line that aren't aren't available yet, and we're not going through the put the genie back in the bottle thing. So we're, until we get some more pieces, we have another. Budget subcommittee meeting scheduled for the 29th, Monday the 29th at 4 o'clock. So we'll have something for you the next time we all sit together. But it's too early at this point to give you anything because it, it wouldn't it just wouldn't be a good idea. Patty? Um, uh, Mr. Scanlon made a uh, recommendation that we do put um, uh, in our budget uh, a line item for the cafeteria. Um, would you like me to do a projection of where we are compared to last year yes. and see if we should add some money in there to cover that loss? Yeah, I, I don't expect to write the ship, you know, completely that fast because mm -hmm. we really, we didn't even have a full year to do that. So it uh, might not be a bad idea to put it in there if, because we know we're going to have to pay it if we end up in a deficit situation again. It's got to come from somewhere. So let's be real. I will do that then. Bob? Just what I mentioned earlier, uh, listening about these capital requests and all the, some of those things had some maintenance items so-called mixed in there and what have you. We need to properly budget uh, for the maintenance of this building as to the actual costs. And because what we've been doing is uh, at the end of the year, if we have any money left over, we've been doing these projects and what have you but we're not budgeting for it but we don't as a budget subcommittee we don't decide what we need we have information provided for us by the people who use the things to tell us what they need and that's what we work with but i just want to make sure that that it's been conveyed to them that if something needs to be fixed or repaired around here that it should be in that maintenance budget and not depend upon 
uh, having money left over at the end of the year to fix it. We That's my discuss, point. We did discuss what he's talking about. I mean, and we're hope, hopefully we can add to that. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I just think that, uh, you know, yeah, you know, it, it's going to be the annual balancing act. Oh, of course it is. This but is, that's what been this happening is only for years. Act one. Yep. That's been happening people. for years. We cut the hell out of it and try to make it work. But and being chair, I I happen I wanted to sit in on what they were talking about and going through it, and you know, give a point of view from my aspect, even though we had somebody from each town there, so. I thought it. I thought it went well for the first, first viewing. Well, we do have a, a second budget meeting set up for uh, January 29th, 29th. Um, at four o'clock. And um, when, if that uh, the committee feels that the budget is in better shape, we will email it out to you so that you will have it to review before the February meeting. Where is the meeting? Uh, it'll probably be in Dr. Carey's office. Anybody else have any questions? If not, uh, collaborative. Who's, we haven't met. Okay. Uh, Darius, you have anything to share with us tonight? Well, we only have about ten school days since our last meeting, and I tried to bribe you guys with cookies and coffee. Um, so I, I know successful. I don't have a successfully, by the way. <laughs> successful. I don't have a, a principal's report because of that. Um, I can give you an update of the. Um, building committee that met last night. Um, I think we had a good first meeting, kind of laid the groundwork of, um, you know, what our what our charge was, and um, and immediately um, kind of got off to, um, you know, how how will we fund this? And there are other ways outside of the bond um, idea to fund it. And so um, that's where we started discussion. We really didn't get. It was a good introductory meeting. It really needs. It's. It was. That's what it was. I would say that we haven't come to any conclusions. A lot of people threw a lot of ideas out there that, um, you know, some of it was, you know, fun. I guess you could say, and some of it was, you know, well, we need to get a lot more information. You know, um, I guess fun was a bad term used there, but you know, I'm saying that people had different ideas and how, to, and then trying to get any. We also were, gave a lot of ideas of what people felt the towns would approve right now. And um, they really want to look at um, steering away from the three million dollar bond over you know 10, 20 years, um, and see if there's another way of doing that before we go that before looking at that route. So, you know, put all the options on the table. Um, next meeting, we um, the charge for the next meeting is through my notes here instead of doing it off of memory. Um, is I have to do some research about you know looking into. Um, can you create a municipal cooperation or trust to, again, this is very early on stages, but can we create an agreement with the towns instead of going out and getting money to fund something over several years and what that would look like? And so this is, again, ideas that we're throwing against the wall without any research. So people at home don't be freaking out. Um, I'm also looking at FERCOG, FERCOG and what, you know, what can they provide for us um, we also want to have Bob Lesko at the next meeting and to kind of go through the list so that uh, members of the school committee, I think, have a pretty good idea what the list was, but the select board members that were there, um, you know, probably actually want to see some of the things we're talking about um, so they can grasp on when we talk about priority lists and if we can break this over, over the years, what does that look like, you know. Um, so that's going to come up at the next meeting as well. And then I got to follow up with Patty to get the bonding information she gave out the last meeting. But that was kind of my charge orders for the next meeting. And the other guys were there. What do you, you know, if What's, Phil or Bob? Can you guys figure out the next meeting? No, I'm going to do a doodle again. Um, I'll try to fill it in a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try to do it in yeah. three weeks, Bob. If you, if you need me to be there, just let me know. Yeah, thanks. And can we Did be emailed anything? that day? Is that? Can we be emailed that day of the meeting? You should be. Sure. To show up, the school committee would like to know the date of the next meeting in case they want to attend. Right, can all right. I can, have, I can have, we're down into the post and I can have her send out to yeah, all the school committee, not just yeah. members of all. Any other well, questions for Darius? What's that? Well, the part, part of the next meeting is probably going to include sort of an inspection with the, the, of, you know, and walking around. And, uh, okay, so that's 
Dr. Carey, you're next. I um, expected the, uh, the meeting to go quite a bit longer. I did bring some data on the uh, Special Ed Task Force. It's also my superintendent's message this month. I can pass it out. Um, and if you have any questions about it, but I think it's probably... Okay, so this was um, originated uh, last, uh, last spring. We decided that based on the information that we had from uh, a curriculum audit, a special ed curriculum audit, and a, uh, a curriculum audit from Curriculum Management, Inc., that um, they wanted us to look at uh, our special ed program and what's and how it's it's working across the district. So this uh, we we actually contracted with the collaborative to uh, help us facilitate a series of meetings to develop a task force. The director, uh, the special ed director, and the task force developed a vision, which is to decrease the impact of students' disability while increasing participation in their natural environment. If you remember um, my original goals, this was part of it, but it wasn't fleshed out, and so um, I, I put it off. But it is definitely an important piece of what we're doing. What they want to do is, um, instead of having us and them, special ed kids, students with their needs separate from the other students, to develop a more inclusive practice. So they have a, a group of 16 dedicated educators uh, from the five different schools meeting, and they have developed three focus groups. And one of the focus group is, is MTSS, which is multi-tiered system of supports. So that means um, essentially personalized education, uh, particularly based on the students' needs. And uh, Sometimes they need extra help in the classroom, sometimes they need extra help outside of the classroom, sometimes they need um, to have their whole uh, curriculum modified. But there's a group working on that. There's another group uh, working on vertical alignment of inclusive services so that when the transition is made from, uh, say, the elementary schools into the middle school, the students are more ready to um, you know, a lot of their supports will sunset as they develop more responsibility for their own learning. And uh, the connection and the collaboration between elementary educators and high school educators who are, who are on this, these committees. And then parent engagement is always important when you're discussing uh, particularly uh, s students that might have uh, different needs. So the, uh, the goal is to have a special education strategic plan uh, by the end of June. These folks meet um, on our early release days and they really do collaborate and work hard. We'd like to see some more regular education teachers involved, um, but the, uh, the special education uh, people on the committee really are dedicated and interested in bringing out more understanding of what special ed can do and how we can work together to actually have one system of supports pretty much for everyone. We've spent a lot of time in professional development with differentiation and uh, meeting students personal learning uh, profiles and this really is to take off on that but also to uh, to ensure that our students all of them that are that that there's a seamless and efficient way to educate all of them and uh, just to help bring out to all of us parents other teachers IAs uh, that there's a continuum of service services that we offer and and how we can use them more um, effectively and more um, knowledgeably so it's just a slight paradigm shift from the old special ed way of doing business to something that's just slight, not, you know, overwhelming, but something a lot more inclusive that would include um, bringing everyone together, so to speak. So this is um, kind of a summary. 
that uh, our facilitator and our director of special ed have, have uh, come up with and um, I'm really... How often do they meet? They meet at least once a month. They have met four times as a complete team um, and, and those that time I think the whole group meets and it's for a longer period of time but they meet at least once every three to four weeks during early release and they they really work hard and they're in different they put themselves on different focus groups within the task force it's really well constructed and hopefully in spring after all of this uh, we will have um, a presentation about the uh, how they've met their goals and, and what their initiative plans. And this is all part of our strategic plan that I brought to you in October at the joint meeting. Along with my goals, I brought the strategic plan for the district that the admin team worked on over the summer and that special ed task force was on it. Good. Uh, would you be able to answer any specific questions on it? I think so. What does it mean by inclusion is not a place? Yeah, and, and you know, um, this I didn't type. Uh, this I didn't generate uh, it, it should be inclusion is not a place in other words when we say um, you know conveying to colleagues students and parents that inclusion is not a place inclusion is not well he's in the classroom so he's included it's not your presence being there it's actually um, being included environmentally you're included not only you're sitting in a class with an IA by uh, by your side helping you do the work but you're included in the discussions and the activities and um, a more uh, you're able to do the same uh, meaningful tasks that they do in the classroom they might be modified but you're able to you know collaborate with your peers to be able to work uh, somewhat independently as you're developing your own uh, responsibility for your own learning but yeah inclusion a lot of people think well he's included in the classroom right. he's over there in the corner see with mrs. so-and-so yeah. and so we just just take those rough edges off thank you anybody else have any questions motion to adjourn Seven forty-five. a second second all in favor? Refreshments, right?